Okay, there we go. Now I'm live. Hello, our saviors. All right, good morning. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Glad that you could join us for worship and fellowship and, and being together. Uh, glad that you're able to do that. We know that you could be anywhere on a Sunday morning, so we're glad that you're here. Um, it is. It could be. Feel free. <laughs> I got this. Take the rest of the day. <laughs> I invite you to rise as you're able, and we'll offer our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let's sing our first song together. Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, 
You place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world and all its need with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Once we learn to speak it. 
reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And in that day, way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Psalm 78 will be read responsively. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. Raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. A reading from Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you were looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite the kids up for a children's sermon. So any kids, kids of any age, come on up, Gideon. Oh, I like this ring. That's a cool ring, man. I like that. Come on up, come on up. We can use some people on this side if some of the kids want to sit on this side. That's okay. Here, you want to sit right here? Yeah, you can sit right here. All right. So uh, I've got something in my hands. <laughs> well, you are a smart dude. Did you say bread? I don't know. I was kind of thinking this might be something else. Is this, this is a... Almost like a pretzel bun, isn't it? Yeah, you see all the little weaves in there, like pieces of dough woven around. You guys see that? It's kind of cool, right? Have you guys ever had bread like this? No? Yeah? This is a special kind of bread. It's called, okay, this is a weird word to say. Can you do this sound in your throat? It's like, huh. can you do that? There you go. Yeah, almost like you're trying to clear your throat. It's called hala. Can you say that? Hala. There you go. Now, it's not like, holla, you know, uh, you got that little ch at the back of your throat. And this is the kind of bread that, uh, that uh, some Jewish people have been making for a long time, and it's kind of neat. This is, we're going to use this for communion later on, and I'm really excited about that. So you'll get like a little piece of bread rather than a wafer. For the kids and the adults, that'll be cool, right? But you guys, you guys get to taste them a little bit early, Okay. We're going to be talking today about what feeds us, and while we talk about that, I'll hand you guys a little little piece. You want a little piece right there? Now, this isn't communion bread. This is just regular old, regular old yummy bread that you can try out, and uh, you can taste how good it is. Now, your parents will get it later, but you get it first. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Now, is bread the only thing that feeds us? What do you guys think? No? What else feeds us? Anyone eat cereal for breakfast this morning? Yeah, this is better than your bread at home? Yeah? <laughs> Got to get some better bread over there, guys. <laughs> Poor kid, the Martin family. Hey, can you guys hand that down to you? Pass that all the way down to the end right there. See if you'd like some. Uh, yeah, but other bread, yeah. Can you pass that down a little bit right there? And I'll do one more here for you all the way to the end. There you go. Um, now, uh, he doesn't want to, I'll eat it then. All right. What else do you guys eat? What feeds you? Water? Water feeds you, yeah. You got to have water to live, don't you? Your favorite food. but what you, Milk, yeah. What else? Anyone ever had pizza? What about you guys? Veggies, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you like to eat? Pizza? Yeah, pizza's good, isn't it? 
You think we should ever have pizza for communion? Would that be good? Pepperoni pizza. How about that? For your first communion, maybe we'll do pepperoni pizza. How about that? You like mac and cheese? Yeah. Yeah, lots of kids like mac and cheese. That's good stuff, isn't it? Now, is food the only thing that feeds us? Is there a way to be fed other than stuff going into our tummy? How about when we get fed by the information that our teachers give us in school? You guys love that, don't you? Everybody loves school. Yeah, you guys like learning, right? No? Oh, man, yeah, my kids don't like learning very much either. What about things that feed your spirit, not just your stomach and not just your mind, but your spirit? How about love? Does anyone get fed love by their parents? Yeah? I know that they don't get as good a bread as that, but I think your parents probably still love you. So I think they feed you love just fine, even if it's not as good a bread, right? Yeah. Your parents give you love. Who else gives you love besides your parents? Friends, yeah. You have some good friends that they feed you love, yeah. Your uncles, very good. Not your aunts, just your uncles, I understand. Who else? Yeah, your other relatives, like grandparents maybe? Yeah. What about people here at church? A lot of these people love you guys. If you guys were in need, I think they would probably help out. We get fed in our stomachs. We get fed in our heads. We get fed in our spirits. There's all kinds of ways that we feed. So think about that today. As you guys head back to your seats, think about all the ways in which you're fed. Love and sustenance and things that give you life. All right, you guys can go. You guys can go. <laughs> head back to your seats in your pews with your parents. I'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, that bread here later on in the sermon, but um, I uh, wanted to share with you guys a story from way back. As you guys have probably heard, I, for about 10 years, toured in a heavy metal band all over the U.S., the 48 uh, contiguous states, and Canada, and Europe, and South Africa, and Mexico, and stuff. And... Um, when I talk about that, I think a lot of people start to envision in their head uh, a tour bus and um, groupies and roadies and lots of nice food and parties. And um, that was not our reality. Um, we were in a 15-passenger van, four or five of us, with maybe a merch guy. And we got a shower about once a week. And... Um, the money was so extravagant that we got what's called a per diem. How much money you got per day to buy food. And some bands that were doing much better than us would have like, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars per day for food. We had five. So you got five bucks and that lasted you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you'd roll up to Taco Bell and you'd go, oh, I know this menu intimately, you know. <laughs> Oh, this one's 10 cents higher than the one in Nebraska. Like, I'm going to have to make do here, you know. So, uh, so we, would, uh, we would survive on that scarcity of money and food. Uh, it got so bad even at one point, probably the most stark, dire time, was in 2006 as we're finishing writing for our second album. And uh, there was some delay in the process to where we couldn't enter the studio as soon as we had wanted. And our lead guitarist at the time lived in Philadelphia, and we were all from Georgia. So we had gone up there to sort of work in a practice space to finish up writing the songs for the album, finishing them to, before we recorded. And money was running thin because of the delay. And so we're laying there on the floor, the vocalist and I, and um, we're trying to calculate, okay, you know, we got six weeks left until uh, we're done with this whole process, and this is how much money we got left. And you're starting to do the quick math of how many people there are, how many meals there are, and how much you have per meal for the four band members. And I said to the vocalist, okay, I think we could eat scrambled eggs every day for every meal for the next six weeks. And we could get like some salt and pepper from restaurants, you know, to have some seasoning and you know, he was a little bit crestfallen, and he said, well, yeah, I don't know, maybe that could work. We could, like, get some cheese and add that in. I said, we don't have money for cheese. Um, 
that's how dire it got for a while. Now, we had resources to fall back on. We had parents who were, you know, still vaguely supportive of what we were doing. <laughs> so if, if worse came to worse, we could fall back on them. And there are people who do not have that luxury. So there are, there are people who have it much, much worse, both then and now and way back into the past. There have always been people who are literally starving or on the verge of starvation. And we see that around the world now as you have various places uh, in war-torn countries where food is scarce. The same was true of the Israelites. This story this morning from the Old Testament that you heard Diana read comes from the story of the Exodus. They're in slavery, the people, and then God liberates them, and they're like, yes, we did it. We crossed the Red Sea. Pharaoh's chariots were dashed. We're free. And then they look around, and they're like, we're in the wilderness. What do we do now? We don't have homes. We don't have any kind of economy, any work to do, no gardens, no vineyards. What are we going to do for food? How are we going to survive? And the people start to kind of enter crisis mode. And a food crisis for the Israelites becomes a faith crisis out there in the wilderness. And these hungry people start to remind me uh, a little bit of my own kids, you know, when I'll be sitting there reading my P.G. Wodehouse or C.S. Lewis or T.S. Eliot, and I'm trying to relax and enjoy some reading, and then I hear, I'm hungry, and I think, okay, are they going to figure this out for themselves, or are they going to bother me some more? And they come into the room, Dad, I'm, I'm hungry, you know, and I say, Elijah, how long has it been? Like 30 minutes since you had eight hot dogs? You know, I don't see how you could be hungry right now. Nevertheless, there is a, just a yawning, gaping pit of need for food. And so we figure it out. And I wonder if God felt, la felt that way with the Israelites. You know, they're out there in the wilderness. And God has already miraculously delivered them from slavery. And now the kids, so to speak, are like, Hey, I'm hungry. We got to have some stuff. And uh, you realize that the Israelites had forgotten the saving work that God had accomplished in the Exodus. They'd forgotten it so much, they start to long for the food that they had in Egypt. The situation they had in slavery. Isn't that crazy? Despite all that, God hears their cries and comes to their rescue. Yahweh miraculously provides for them in this story, sending manna for bread and quail for meat. This is not bad. You got bread, you got meat, you got a sandwich, you're doing okay. Now our psalm kind of echoes that. The psalm that we read together today speaks of that manna that came from heaven. And uh, we don't exactly have manna today, but we do have bread. And you guys saw it earlier during the children's sermon, but uh, this is called challah. And uh, Clark Heiser made it. I've got an image up here of, um, of him making the loaves that I can share with you. And uh, he did a great job. He makes this regularly, and so we used this at first service. It was great. We'll be using it again here at second service, and you'll get to see Pastor Peter pick up uh, a giant loaf and be able to tear that in half. It's kind of awesome looking to see something that large. And it worked out really nicely. <clears throat> but uh, even though it's not exactly manna, it is something that feeds us, something that sustains us. Uh, manna, the word, means an unexpected or gratuitous benefit. And today, we are all recipients of this unexpected and gratuitous benefit. The bread we get, the wine we get, unifies us. It reminds us that we're all on the same footing here, all recipients of the same gift. Just like those hungry Israelites in the wilderness were all in the same camp out there in the desert. No one gets better bread than anyone else. Even if you give a whole bunch of money, you'll get the same bread. Now, I would like someone to at least attempt that, you know. Come in and say, Pastor Seth, let me get the good bread. Here's a million dollar check, you know. <laughs> if you would like to try that, I would appreciate the attempt. Um, but uh, we will all, in solidarity, receive the same. 
because we're all in this together. Our unity is what unites us, and our unity is what enables our diversity. Our unity enables our diversity. You get that a little bit from the Apostle Paul in that New Testament reading this morning that you heard Diana read. He, uh, he speaks of all the diverse talents that are there. God has given some to be preachers, some to be teachers, some to do this, some to do that. Everybody's got their varying gifts. There's diversity. Everybody's got different perspectives, varying goals, variations in taste and preference. But that variation is united in one vision for ministry. That ministry, on Sunday mornings at least, has one goal, to build up the body of Christ, to build each other up. Paul weaves together this morning a doctrine and ethics into a beautiful tapestry. He's laying right here, plain for all to see, the beating heart of Christianity. He says, there's no separation between theory and and praxis. These are common terms in certain circles. Theory meaning uh, the things you learn and the perspective you hold in your head, and praxis being the things you do, the actual physical manifestation of the things you've learned. So I've got another slide up here to show you those terms. Orthodoxy and orthopraxy. Orthodoxy has been well covered in church history. Orthodox means right belief. So the church argued about right belief and had councils like the Council of Nicaea from which we get the Nicene Creed. We have the Apostles' Creed. We have the Athanasian Creed. We have all these creeds that tell us what is right belief. This is the right thing to believe. Orthopraxy is right practice. And we don't talk very much about that. What is it that we do with the things that we believe? So Paul lays out for us here the opportunity to engage in orthopraxis, to have right practice as we remember who we are. We do what we do because we are who we are. We are beloved baptized children of God. And because of that, we can then go do what we were called to do. Remember, these people in Jesus' presence in the gospel reading, they say, what works have you done? What works can we do? Because they recognize that you don't have faith if it doesn't work out into the rest of your life. Remember that James said, faith without works is dead. If you only have orthodoxy, but no orthopraxy, then do you really have orthodoxy? Do you really have right belief if it's not manifesting itself in acts of love? So the works we're called to do are the works like Jesus did. Works of selfless love. God's love has become ours in baptism. And our work isn't to hoard that love, but instead to invest it and plant it as seeds in a garden. Our praxis, our right praxis, is to love without cost, without the thought of the cost of that love. Not because we're all awesome people and we've got it all figured out, but because we've experienced a love that has lifted us. We've been loved, and that's enabled us to turn them in love to the rest of the world. I'll remind you of these words from the epistle, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. This is good news for us, friends in Christ. It is the gospel of our Lord. Amen.
You may be seated for the prayers. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh, wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. We pray for all who are ill, especially Angie, Ray, Janice, Jason, Gary, Judy, Bev, and Debbie. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh, wisdom of truth, help us to understand your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed, especially Stephen Soltweedel. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We we'll share a sign of God's peace with one another. Thank you. 
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Jesus said he came to bring life and life abundant. This is abundance. <laughs> so in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Come, all are welcome. is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Please pray with me. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We have some announcements this morning. First, uh, Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow morning. I know some of you who are participating uh, will have a, a gathering right after this worship service to get things set up. But uh, we're still taking people, so if you have some friends, family, neighbors who would benefit from uh, some mornings of Vacation Bible School this week, please invite them and have them come by. Also, the Corn Fest Parade is uh, a week from Wednesday, and uh, we're looking for folks who want to walk in the parade, uh, and we need candy. Uh, so if you'd like to make a candy donation, we still have boxes out there, even up through next Sunday, even, frankly, even up through that day. Uh, and also we'll need some folks to help set up um, the Blacktop Party, which is the se uh, 7th of September. And uh, all of these signups, plus a whole lot more, is out at the Welcome Center, especially if you have a pickup, because we have some bouncy houses, and you're not going to fit those in the trunk of your car. So if you can help out with that uh, for the blacktop party, that would be a big help. Uh, and finally, the uh, uh, transition process continues. Uh, please, if you haven't gotten information about that, the pink sheets are also out on the Welcome Center. I am very happy to report that we have assembled a transition team. We'll let you know who that is next Sunday. But we're gathering those folks together and we're gonna get started on the 12th. And you're gonna see things happening. Uh, pretty rapidly and pretty deeply uh, over the next couple of weeks and months, so uh, stay tuned. Thanks. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let's rise for our final song. And we invite the kids to come forward and play with us on these, uh, on these instruments. Come on, guys. Yeah, here we go. We need more kids. Come on.
body of God. Thanks be to God. Shine, Jesus, shine. Oh!